This is problem number one for section 2.3. In this problem it says, sketch the interval AB on the x-axis with the point C inside. Then find the largest value of delta greater than zero such that for all x, zero less than x minus C, or absolute value x minus C less than delta, apply, implies A less than x less than B. Okay. In this whole section, we're going to be talking about the precise definition of a limit. And essentially what they're going to they're going to talk about is you're going to have some x values. So if you look down here at this bottom, bottom line in our definition, you're going to have some x values that are going to need to be less than a certain tolerance. So this delta is just like a tolerance. So you're going to have some x values that have to be less than a certain tolerance in order to produce y values. That's what f of x is and the limit, uh, y values that are less than epsilon. So the idea is we need some x values that are less than delta so that we get some y values that are less than epsilon. And delta and epsilon are like tolerances. Uh, they're <coughs> how precise we are with finding our limit, essentially. That's why it says the precise definition of limit. Because remember, we're always essentially trying to get closer and closer and closer to this point C itself. And because we can te technically never reach that point C, uh, we're going to set up tolerances to get us as close as possible that we can, or to whatever we decide is the tolerance. So in this problem, they're essentially saying, write these on a number line and then pick uh, pick the right number for delta. And we always want to go with the smaller number of the two numbers we get. So let's go ahead and write this out. So we'll make a number line. And we'll mark A and B. And they say C is in the middle. So uh, B is here. And B is negative 1 over 4. A is over here. And it's negative 4 ninths. And then we have C in the middle. And C, we don't know if it's closer to, we're not sure if it's closer to 1 quarter or is it closer to negative 4 ninths. So e, these could be the exact same gaps between or it could favor to one side or the other. What we want to do is we want to check that. And that's where this whole absolute value thing comes in, is we want the absolute value of one of our x values minus the C value. So this is A. This is B, and this is C. So we're going to use the absolute value. So our first check will be, let's say, CB, line segment CB. We're going to do uh, the absolute value of negative 1 fourth minus, and I'm just using this right here, minus C, which is negative 1 third. And then I'm also going to do from A to C. So I'm going to just go ahead and say, uh, A to C, line segment, and we're going to say that that's negative 4 ninths minus negative 1 third. Okay, plug those in the calculator, see what we get. So negative, use the fraction button, 1 over 4 minus negative and use a fraction, 1 over 3. That gives us 1 12th. So this is 1 over 12. I'm going to grab this again and just switch the fractions and the front part of the subtra subtraction. So this is 4 ninths. And now we're subtracting negative 1 third. Looks right to me. Hit enter. This is negative 1 ninth, but remember we're taking the absolute value of negative 1 ninth, which is 1 ninth. Okay, now the question is, which is smaller? Is 1 twelfth smaller or is 1 ninth smaller? Where 1 twelfth is smaller, that means this gap here, this delta value, so this is going to be our delta value, this is the, and that's what they're asking us for here, so it's find the largest value of delta. So the largest value of delta that we can use is 1 12th because we don't want to use this 1 9th delta because this gap 
is smaller than it. So we always got to go with the smallest value to make sure that our epsilon, uh, which would be the y values, to make sure that the epsilon part, which is right here, the y values still fall in there. Because remember, the x values dictate the y values. So you need to make sure that your delta value, you pick the smaller of the two options so that you still stay within the constraints of what epsilon is. So long story short, find the, find the gaps between them, pick the smallest one. That's going to be your delta value.